So let's put on some fine Auramite armour and talk about the Emperor's own legion in 9th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video I thought we'd take a focused look at the Adeptus Custodes, the Emperor's own personal legion of superhumans who suddenly sprang into being as their own full army throughout 8th edition and with the addition of their snazzy Forge World toys have been doing seriously well at tournaments in 9th. In the video we'll have a quick talk over their strengths and weaknesses, the various strong rules that they can deploy from the Codex, talk through all of their units both in the Codex and in Forge World, and finish up with one idea for an army list. Plenty to chat about, so let's make a start. So first of all, the Adeptus Custodes as a whole do seem to be doing very well in 9th edition so far. I feel that both in their Codex and in the Forge World Compendium, a lot of their data sheets are really quite well balanced and very usable, and through all of 9th so far, they've been consistently turning out the tournament results, and they've certainly remained one of the factions to beat. I think that the transition from 8th edition to 9th edition really did wonders for the Custodes. They just work really well with the 9th edition primary missions, which really does favour their durable units with Obsec, moving on to objectives and fighting all comers who try and take them off them. For the army strengths, they're enormously durable throughout virtually the whole army, mainly having 2 plus armour saves and great involves throughout. Their units have solid melee damage output, each one fighting with a similar sort of power to a character of some of the lesser factions. And what's more, as they're so elite, all of them hit on twos, and that's really quite a nice bonus, as it means they're really resilient to things like modifiers, they don't really care too much if they're dropped down to hitting on threes, if you happen to be minus one against them. Their army-wide obsec on all their infantry and bikes is such a boon as well, it means even their characters and more elite choices kind of put a significant weight on objectives, and force the opponent to put obsec troops on themselves, or the face that they're not going to secure the objective. As for potential drawbacks, they really are hyper-elite, perhaps the most elite army in 40k unless you're counting knights, and that does have some of its own downsides, such as struggling to screen quite as well, and perhaps not always having the sheer weight of attacks that they might want to deal with big hordes. They are certainly somewhat vulnerable to mortal wounds, the Emperor's Aegis save just really isn't enough to really deny that, and sometimes with their slower units they might struggle to bring that hefty weight to bear in melee, as they do have the potential to be either screened or kited. They do have some solid range options, but they're just perhaps not quite as extensive as some of the other factions. A lot of their shooting does tend to be sort of mid-strength damage two shots, which are good against some things, but maybe not quite as good against some armies like Death Guard. Also, from a bit of a practical point of view, they have far more models and kits available that are Forge World exclusive, as opposed to kits that are available within their own codex. While they're very solid now, they might not be updated quite as regularly, and it does mean that they're a bit expensive for getting your hands on them. At least on the flip side though I guess, the actual units from Games Workshop are really quite cheap in terms of the money that you invest for the points you get out. First up I thought we'd focus on some of the strongest rules for the faction, their army wide rules, warlord traits, relics and stratagems. Here we'll mainly focus on things that aren't too specific to individual units or shield companies. As I mentioned they have that excellent obsec on infantry and bike units, and generally a 4 plus or better invul save on all the infantry and bikes. Those high invuls are really quite powerful, as most of the time they really need things like anti-tank weapons turned on them to try and make them die. They have the 6 plus feel no pain against psychic mortal wounds, though honestly it doesn't do all that much. They're still somewhat vulnerable, with a high points cost per wound, and they really don't want to be buried under a barrage of smite. The warlord traits have a few decent options, perhaps my favourite is superior creation. This one gives you a 5 plus feel no pain type save against anything and it basically makes your captain an extra 50% more durable against enemy fire. Really nice in combination with some really tough relics, such as the Auric Aquilas. You can also get Exploding Sixes to hit, not a bad little melee boost, though maybe not quite as potent as the extra feel no pain, and a couple of cool ones from the shield companies that we'll come on to. From the generic relics for the Codex, perhaps my favourite are those Auric Aquilas, it's the one that makes the shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike get a 3 plus invul save, and also re-roll charges to boot. 3 plus invuls are really quite rare in 40k, but not quite as rare throughout the custodian's army. It means that on a good day, this guy can be laughing off multiple rounds of anti-tank fire, and he just really won't die. There is also the Eagle's Eye, which gives you the 3 plus invul for a regular shield captain. Another quite powerful one is the Castellan's Mark, that allows you to redeploy one unit that's nearby the character. If you're just buying this in for one extra command point, then that can be quite a powerful tool. Maybe if you had some sort of massive unit, like a big unit of Virtus Praetors, you could maybe put them hyper-aggressive if you thought you were going first. 
and then sneakily redeploy them out of line of sight if your opponent does get lucky with the roll-off. Kasuri's stratagems are generally quite powerful, and anything that affects their units tends to be quite high value as well, as their units tend to be really quite expensive, and it means that you can gain quite a lot of damage output or durability, even from fairly minor buffs. Some of the ones that I'd be most tempted to use commonly include their 12 inch 1 CP Deny the Witch chance, and they also have a 1 CP one to have a 4 plus chance to resist a power directly cast onto a custodies unit. That could be really useful for a powerful debuff. Fraternity of Heroes is an excellent army wide heroic intervention stratagem. It means that your opponent can't put a unit within 3 inches of a custodies model if they don't want to potentially be in combat with it. They have a cheaper interrupt, 1 command point if you're nearby an objective, always nice to have. The excellent Tanglefoot Grenade Stratagem, you use it when an enemy within 12 inches attempts to charge, you roll a d6, and you decrease their charge distance by that amount. If you get lucky, this could break the charge of a powerful enemy unit, and it's a really potent one. Slayers of Nightmares is a nice one for dealing with big critters, plus one to wound against units with a higher toughness. Stooping Dive is a crazy powerful one for anything with a jet bike. This allows you to charge in your opponent's turn, and then fight before even the charging units. It can be absolutely game-changing, as say your opponent charges you with a scary unit, you use this stratagem to stooping dive them, and then all of a sudden you've killed the enemy unit, and potentially even saved one of your own to boot. Finally, another potentially interesting one is the Emperor's Auspice. If you want one unit to survive that bit easier, then this can mean that there's no rerolls for attacks to hit or wound against them. Could be handy against certain armies. There are more, but I feel that these are potentially either the most powerful, or the ones that you'd use most commonly. If we have a specific focus on characters now, they do also have a few specific character stratagems, and also really quite a nice buff that they got in their Psychic Awakening supplement in the Captain Commander Traits table. One of those Captain Commander Traits is pretty much an auto-include for me. It's one command points to give really quite a decent buff to your Shield Captain, though unfortunately you can only use it once. Perhaps one of my favourites is Unstoppable Destroyer, that gives him a D3 plus 3 inch consolidation and piling move, and when he does those moves, he doesn't have to go closest to the nearest model. This allows all sorts of gamey shenanigans when you're charging. Could be really handy for hitting one unit, and then maybe moving away and tying up a different one. There really are lots of ones that I'd consider viable picks though. Inspirational Exemplar for just a really big reroll ones aura. One that gives plus two wounds, which would be nice to stack with the Auric Aquilas and the 5 plus Feel No Pain. One that regenerates command points on a 5 plus, and one that gives him plus one to advance and charge, so a bit more chance of making melee. A few character specific stratagems include Victor of the Blood Games. This one's a 2 command point one that allows you to reroll one either hit, wound, or save per turn. Generally, out of these, the most powerful thing that you can do with it is reroll a save. And again, that stacks amazingly with the Auric Aquila's jet bike, as it means that you could reroll an invul save with a good chance to make that save afterwards and prevent yourself loads of damage. If you stack that with another command reroll, then it means that you could be rolling two saves per turn. And when you're only failing a small amount of them to begin with, that means that your captain's really not going to take much damage at all. It is a bit pricey though at 2 CP, and a lot of lists these days do tend to leave it off. Otherwise, they get only in death, the 2 command point 1 to fight when they die. And there's a nice 1 command point 1 called Shoulder the Mantle, which allows a non-warlord shield captain to become the warlord if your first one happens to die. For that 1 command point, he also gets to generate a warlord trait of your choosing there and then, so it could be quite handy in a pinch. Before we get into units for the Custodes and look at the Sisters of Silence, I thought it was also worth talking about the Shield Companies. These are the Custodes sub-faction choice, each gets a Relic, Warlord trait, and Stratagem. There are five of them, I've chosen to focus on my favourite three, where perhaps the most commonly played competitively are the Shadow Keepers and the Dread Host. The Shadow Keepers mainly because of their one command point stratagem, which allows you to reduce the strength of an incoming attack by one. Having a reactive defensive buff to put on the already tough Custodes is really potent, and in some interactions it can be really devastating to have that debuff applied. Say your opponent was about to shoot a Telemon Dreadnought that's toughness 8 with a bunch of melter weapons, spend one command point with this, and all of a sudden they're all wounding on fives and nowhere near as big of a threat. Could be similar with people shooting regular Custodes, maybe if they're attacking with a strength 5 or 6 weapon. They do have a somewhat interesting Lock Warden Warlord trait as well, which basically turns your shield captain into a bit of a character assassin. Other characters will be minus 1 to hit him in close combat, but more importantly, they'll have minus 1 to their saving throws against his attacks, and that also applies to invul saves, being one of the few things that reduces invul saves in 40k. 
The Dread Host have pretty useful things for their stratagem, relic, and warlord trait. Their stratagem is really quite nice for anything that's looking to deep strike using the custodian stratagem. From Golden Light they come, which is an option to put units into the deep strike reserve. It's one command point for one, or two command points for up to three units. And if they've deep struck, they get to roll 3d6 for their charge, and then pick the two highest dice. Gives them a far better chance to make the all-important 9, particularly if you're sparing a command reroll as well. They have a Relic Axe in Admon Immortis, a Castellan Axe that's Strength 8, AP-3 and Damage 3. A lot of Custodes weapons tend to be Damage D3, so it's really quite nice to have a really hard-hitting one. And on top of that, you can take an Exploding Sixes in Melee Aura, where the Warlord trait will not only be buffing themselves, but also nearby Custodes. The Dread Host just seems like a nice, aggressive shield company. Finally, another one that I found quite interesting is the Solar Watch. This one perhaps mainly for their Warlord trait, where it's an aura of an inch extra movement for your Custodes units, and that could potentially be good trying to get a slow-moving army to the midfield. They also have a fairly nice stratagem for zero command points, so an auto-use when you kill a character, and that makes your opponent burn an extra command point the next time they use a stratagem. Not going to come that up all that regularly, but when it does, it'll be nice to deplete your opponent's CP reserves. So let's take a trip through their units now, and we'll both be looking at the Custodes units, the Forge World ones, and the Sisters of Silence. For the character choices, pretty much all of them are usable. The only Custodes unique character at the moment is Trajan Valoris. He's an excellent buffing character, giving reroll ones to hit and wound for nearby Custodes, and that'll also apply to himself as well. He's ridiculously tough with a 3 plus invul save, and very good melee on top of that, and he's got a really handy relic in the moment shackle, which can either generate you a few command points when you spend an expensive stratagem, or maybe just let him fight again for a really big flurry of attacks when you need it most. Next we have the Dawn Eagle Jetpack Shield Captain, 175 points, but I feel that he might be worth it over the regular Shield Captains, just because of the amazing 14 inch movement that that jetpack provides. It's really handy just to have a small unit that can zip over such a long distance, orb second objective away from the opponent, do some reasonable shooting with a hurricane bolter or salvo launcher, and then charge into melee with a re-rolling wounds interceptor lance. He's the one I typically choose for building a big layered buff shield captain, almost certainly making use of that relic jet bike and a captain commander trait. Then we have the two foot shield captains, the Alaris Terminator one and the standard one on foot. They're nowhere near as tough, fast or shooty as the Dawn Eagle Captain, but do cost significantly less points. They're really not a bad, fairly budget option if you're going for a bit more of a slow and ponderous advance, maybe with a large shield line of Custodian Guard. The Alaris one is very similar to the standard variant. For the extra 10 points you get the option of Deep Strike, an extra wound, and the option to take a Castellan Axe should you want to. Finally we have the Elite's Choice in the Custodes Vexilla. For me, there's only really one type of standard that I bother with, and that's the Vexilla Magnifica. The Vexillus that bears this is 120 points, and gives a minus 1 to hit aura for all units within 6 inches. That includes everything, including the heaviest vehicles. If you are happy to cluster up the army somewhat, then that's a really significant durability buff that could be spread across a lot of units. On top of that, he has an interesting and crafty stratagem to deploy, Three command points can give you Vexilla Teleport Homer, and this allows one unit to set up from reserve within three inches of the Vexilla, regardless of whether or not enemy units are closer. This means that you could have a fighter unit appear from nowhere, and get a guaranteed charge on an enemy unit that's threatening your battle lines. Honestly, I think the characters are all solid options, depending on the list you could justify any of them, but I'd perhaps not go too crazy on them. As custodians are already such an elite army already, it doesn't really make sense to be making them even more elite by only taking their most expensive models. Moving on, we come to the many and varied Custodes infantry units. From the Codex, we have the Custodian Guard, Custodian Wardens, and Alaris Custodians. And from Forge World, we have the Sagittarium Guard, the Forge World option for the Custodian Guard, the Jetpack Flying Ventari, and the Aquilon Terminators. Starting out with the base troops for Custodian Guard, who I'd personally be taking with Storm Shields over Guardian Spears at the moment, as it gives them a massive 3 plus invul save, and a 2 plus armor save with a plus 1 to that. They're cheap, they're melee capable, they're obsec, they even have a small amount of shooting. They're an absolutely excellent unit for just moving forward, tanking enemy firepower, and stealing objectives. The Forge World Custodian Guard also have the option of equipping Pyrothite Spears, which can give them some melter shots, and for me are perhaps a little bit more interesting than the standard Guardian Spears, as you get a significant increase in firepower for just a few more points. There is another Forge World Troops choice for Custodes though, and that's the Sagittarium Guard Custodians, the ones that pack the powerful Adrastus Bolt Calivers. 
They have the decent defensive profile of a standard custodian guard, plus getting essentially an assault heavy bolter weapon on the move, a little bit of extra damage with their disintegration beam at close range, and on top of that they're not even too bad in close combat either, as they can take a misericordia, giving them AP-2 melee attacks. They're a really good choice for home field objectives, laying down decent firepower, while still being a big pain to shift. Next up we have the Custodian Wardens, 55 points per model, an elite's choice with plus 1 attack, and a 6 plus feel no pain type save, compared with standard Custodian Guards. They come stock with their Guardian Spears, but they can take Castellan Axes, though no Storm Shields. For me, with one extra attack and a 6 up feel no pain, I think they might actually slightly outshine the standard Custodian Guard, if you are equipping them just with their standard Guardian Spears. However, lack of Storm Shields really hurt these guys, and I'd personally prefer to take the Storm Shield Custodian Guard over the Guardian Spear Wardens. Finally, for standard sized infantry, we have the Ventari Custodians, which you can see in the picture here. They're very fast and really quite cheap as well, 55 point base, and they get 12 inch movement, and they have the option of either their spear loadout, or pistols and bucklers. These guys are kind of like standard custodians, except you have to choose one debuff. They both have quite good range damage, at strength 6 and damage 2, and 2 shots each. But if you take the buckler, then their melee damage isn't all that great, only being damage 1. And if you take the spear, then their durability really suffers, as that only gives them a 3 plus armor save. I still think that they're really quite a solid choice, and it seems that most people seem to prefer the Buckler and Pistol build, as opposed to the Spears. Moving on, we come to the Custodia's Terminator options. The Alaris Terminators will cost you 70 points each, and their profile really isn't all that different from standard Custodian Guard, only gaining plus 1 wound, plus 1 attacks, their grenade launcher shooting attack, and the option of taking Castellan Axes. They do have built-in Deep Strike for what it's worth, so you don't have to spend the stratagem. In terms of raw damage output, I'm not sure they're quite on the same level as the standard Custodian Guards, but they do have some really interesting stratagems that they can bring to bear. For 1 command points, they have Concussion Grenades, which means that infantry hit by those grenade launchers get no overwatch and minus 1 to hit for the next turn. Unleash the Lions, which for 1 command points suddenly turns a big unit of Alaris into multiple small units. Every single Terminator becomes its own individual unit and causes a right nightmare for your opponent to try and deal with all of them. Finally, they have really quite a nice powerful defensive stratagem, and for one command point, ignore any AP-1 or AP-2 modifiers. If you're just about to get shot by a bunch of those type weapons, then this is a no-brainer, and it'll mean that all of that shooting will just ping harmlessly off their 2 plus armor save. So you do pay a bit of a premium for these guys, I think I'd be most tempted to just use one unit of them, and try and make the most of those stratagems. Forge World does also have an option in the Aquilon Terminators. They're 75 points each for strength 8, AP-4 and damage 2 melee, which I'd argue is just a little bit better in general purpose than the Castellan Axes of the Alaris. They also get Lastrum Storm Bolters as well, so that's 4 strength 5 shots at 12 inch range, and I think that you could certainly argue that those two could be worth the extra 5 points investment over the Alaris. I don't think there's really all that much in it to be honest, and the Alaris do have a few of their own unique options. It's either the choice of the Aquilon for the slightly better damage output, or the Alaris for the more stratagem options. Next up we have the couple of biker units for the Custodes, and here between the two there isn't really all that much comparison. The Games Workshop Virtus Praetor jet bikes are just a lot better than the Forge World Agamatus Custodians, mainly due to the Virtus Praetors getting a points drop to 85. They're pretty sturdy at toughness 6 and 4 wounds, have pretty solid shooting with either anti-infantry hurricane bolters or anti-tank salvo launchers, Good generalist melee with those interceptor lances that re-roll wounds, access to a burst missile net stratagem, and of course that potentially devastating stooping dive one, which could potentially change games. With a massive 14 inch movement, they really can get to the other side of the board in just a turn or two, so are quite a powerful option for stealing enemy objectives and killing their backfield units, particularly as they have obsec themselves. For me, the Agamatus ones just really don't compete very well, they're 95 points for the same profile, and perhaps their shooting is marginally improved, though honestly there's not that much in it. I don't think they'll be taken competitively until points costs are readjusted. Lastly, but certainly not least, we come to the Dreadnoughts, Vehicles and Flyers of the Custodes, the vast majority of which are Forge World models, aside from the Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought and the Venerable Land Raider. After the Dreadnoughts, the good ones are the Forge World ones, I think. The Telemon's one of the most durable vehicles in the entire game right now, with toughness 8, a 2 plus save, 4 plus invul, minus 1 damage, and the 6 plus feel no pain. His damage output is solid, though not absolutely stratospheric. He's maybe just quite good to hold up the centre of a battle line, 
stomped down the lines unleashing heavy firepower and smashed something with his 4 damage Cestus once he catches it in melee. Both of the Forge World specific Contemptors are really quite efficient, and I must admit I really, really like the Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. He's only 160 points, gets a 2 plus save, 2 is to hit at range in melee, a whopping 5 attacks at damage D3 plus 3, and he's also got a decent amount of shooting as well. This thing is just decent damage at range, melee, is durable, and is quite fast. You really can't go too far wrong with including a few in the list. The Galatus is fairly similar, it's maybe a little bit tougher with a 4 plus invul, and it does have really good melee as well, though I'd perhaps just say it isn't the all round all star that is the Achilles. I'm afraid by comparison, the Venerable Dreadnought with its current stat line just isn't quite as impressive, its range damage just isn't significantly better than the Achilles, its melee damage is far weaker, and it's about the same on durability, having one more wound, but a degrading profile because of that wound. Currently I would say it's the weakest of the Dreadnought options. As for the vehicles, unfortunately the venerable land raider can transport custodies, but it suffers from the same problems as most land raiders, only being passably good as a ranged damage platform for the points, and if you want to transport units forward with it, you risk getting locked up and having all of that firepower shot down so you can't shoot at what you want to. At Ballistic Skill 2+, plus and a 6+, plus feel no pain, I do think that point for point it perhaps is better than standard land raiders, though really that's not saying very much, I'd say it's perhaps one of the weakest units in the army. For Forge World Fire Support Tanks, we have the Caladius Grav Tank, 225 points of very fast, quite rounded shooting, all hitting on twos, and typically blazing away with a bunch of mid-strength shooting. I think it's fairly well costed for its points, and can certainly get very strong in combination with re-rolls or Vexilla Magnifica to make it minus one to hit. The Palace is basically its smaller brother, being fairly cheap and expendable by Custodes standards, only having 8 toughness 6 wounds, and a kind of medium strength gun. Quite cheap, which isn't a bad thing for Custodes units, but it's certainly not going to achieve wonders either. Finally, we have the Coronas Grav Carrier, the variant of the Caladius that transports troops. It is fast, so it could potentially deliver Custodes to the front lines, and it is a little bit more durable than the Caladius. Unfortunately, it also costs more, and has a far worse gun, and I'm just not sure I could justify it, compared with just spending the points on far more troops. I think I'd just rather have another 5 Custodians footslogging towards the enemy, rather than just have the 5 in this. Finally, we have the two very expensive flyers, the Ares Gunship for 450 points. This one you're mainly going to get value out of if you're using its anti-tank weapons, and it is going to be a pain to remove for most opponents' armies, being toughness 8, minus 1 to hit, and a massive 22 wounds. It also has a few mortal wound bombs that you can throw around on the enemy if you need to. Some people do seem to like this thing, but for me it does feel like a lot of eggs in one basket. Some armies might be able to destroy it with relative ease, and some armies might be able to ignore it. After the two flyers though, I think it's certainly better than the Orion dropship, that's 500 points, and again it's a more expensive transport capacity one. It has more of an anti-infantry focus with its guns, but I think those guns for the point are just nowhere near as effective as the Ares. Finally we come to the Sisters of Silence, who were added into the Custodes army list in their War of the Spider Psychic Awakening book, and now you can take them freely in detachments, which is pretty handy for them actually getting fielders. They can actually fill some really nice niches within the army, helping out the Custodes with a bit more anti psyker minus one to cast within 18 inches, and a one command point stratagem to nullify a power nearby on a 3+, plus. that's more reliable than virtually any other army gets. They also have a fun stratagem to make a Perils of the Warp twice as punishing, making an enemy psychic take 2d3 mortal wounds rather than d3 could be really fun if it goes off. They come in three flavours, the close combat vigilators with their great blades, the prosecutors with their bolters, and the witch seekers with their flamers. Vigilators bring more strength 5, AP minus 3, damage d3 melee to the table, and they can get a stratagem for plus 1 to wound if they want it. The melee is quite nice in general purpose, and you can get quite a lot of them for the same points as custodies, but I think they'll just struggle to fill a niche within the custodies codex, which already brings a whole ton of strength 5, high AP damage in close combat, and it doesn't really need them quite so much. I think the strongest unit out of the three Sisters of Silence options are the Prosecutors, as they're quite cheap at only 12 points per model, so it means that they could have a bit of a role for screening, doing grunt objective work and actions, and actually being an expendable screen that's going to hurt far less if you lose it compared with a big unit of Custodians. I wouldn't expect them to do all that much damage with their Bolters, but that's really not the point of them. They do the job of anti psyker cheaper than the others, and are there for grunt work and actions. Finally, we have the overcosted Witch Seekers at 18 points per model, which frankly are just a bit too expensive for me. I don't think there's really much point in paying a premium 
for a Bonter Strength 4 AP nothing attacks. Their damage output is just too low, and their durability is too fragile for that price tag. Lastly, to transport them around, they do have the option of the Nor Maiden Rhino. I'd say not necessary for the cheap prosecutors, but I'd be tempted to use one if you did want to try and make Vigilators work with their Great Blades. A fragile unit like that does need a bit of protection before they charge out and take the fight to the enemy. So finally, I thought we'd just show off one example of a Custodes army list. This one's a Shadow Keeper's Patrol, and it's just trying to show off a little bit of some of the strong options of Custodes armies. I've not invested too much in the characters, just one single shield captain on Dawn Eagle Jetbike. He takes superior creation for the 5 plus feel no pain, the Auric Aquilas for boosted charges and the 3 plus invul, and Unstoppable Destroyer for the Captain Commander trait for the D3 plus 3 inch pile in and consolidate, which will allow him to do some charge phase shenanigans. For the troops, we have one unit of Custodian Guards with Storm Shields, they'll be slogging it down the middle of the battlefield, holding central objectives and being very tough, and then two units of the Sagittarum Custodians, each of which has a Misericordia, and they'll be standing on home field objectives, laying down some decent fire support, and even being potentially able to charge against light infantry that try and take them off them. For fast attack choices, we have a unit of Ventari Custodians, and a unit of Virtus Praetors. These will jump up the board, making use of cover where they can, and hopefully try and engage and destroy enemy units that are moving up similarly, with some fairly decent shooting and melee. They're all obsec as well, so if they do happen to put their toes on objectives while they move up, then so much the better. Finally, for vehicles, which are split between the elites and heavy support choices, we have three dreadnoughts. First, a Telamon heavy dreadnought, also going to be slogging down the middle of the board, dealing out a bit of range damage with a Spiculus launcher and Iliastus cannon, then messing something up with the Seistus. And we have two Contempt Achilles Dreadnoughts, both of which have quite nice range damage with the Dread Spear and Lastrum Bolters, are really tough and have enormous damage in close combat. They both take the Eternal Penitence Drastium, which I'm afraid I haven't mentioned up to now. That gives them plus one attack and re-rolling charges. Depending on the opponent, we could either foot slog these, or we could maybe even think about using the From the Golden Lights Drastium to put them both in Deep Strike Reserve. Having innate charge rerolls, they at least have a fairly decent chance at getting the drop on something right out of reserve. Finally, last but not least, hovering in the backfield somewhere, we'll have a Caladius Grav Tank. For this one, I've taken the Iliastus Cannon, and she'll just be pumping out 14 high accuracy, decent AP shots per turn, hopefully whittling down any target that I'm just about to engage, or any light units that are loitering at the edge of the battlefield, and we're not going to be able to get other custodies into. Hopefully it shouldn't attract too much hate and attention, with so many big, scary, pressing threats charging forward. Overall, as with quite a lot of custodies, it is very elite, but at least we have a fair amount of obsec units, some of them quite fast moving. Perhaps one of the bigger weaknesses of the list might be not having all that much anti-tank range damage. The Caladius, those Dread Spears and the Telamon can all have a go, but really, if there are any truly big nasties, we do kind of need to deal with them in close combat. Might not be very helpful against certain big nasties loitering somewhere at the back of the enemy battle line. Overall though, I think this list could be fun. I have played it myself in one game on TTS. It was an absolute blast to use, and it did seem very effective. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed a bit of a tour through the Custodes Codex. By all means, if you think that I've glossed over anything important, or have made any errors, please let me know down in the comments below. It'll certainly be interesting to see what 9th edition brings for the Golden Boys, and when they have a codex, I'll most certainly be posting a review myself on the channel. So feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see that, or just more 40k strategy videos, which I do try and bring out every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to briefly mention the All Specs Tactics Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Making all of these videos, particularly long in-depth review ones like this, does take an enormous amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, any support is massively appreciated. I do try and reward channel patrons with a fair few advantages, things like seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.